Hey everyone, welcome back to Super Observation. Today we're working on something super duper cool. We're gonna teach you how to level up your video content creation with the magic of Wonder Studio, Substance Painter, and Blender so that you can turn yourself from this into this awesome Tesla bot. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is download the example character from Wonder Studio's Notion. If you have access to the Wonder Studio private beta, you'll have access to a whole bunch of useful items like this example file. So first things first, turn on the shading and you'll see a sort of black, white, and silver checkered pattern. These are just the standard texture files on the example model. So we're going to export that as a FBX file. From here, I'm going to open up Substance 3D Painter, which is a great tool for customizing characters, textures, and getting a style that is, you know, really realistic and high quality. Uh, it's basically like Photoshop in 3D. Of course, Photoshop has their own 3D effects, but this is like Photoshop in 3D on steroids, but like the really good steroids. So once you've imported the model, uh, you'll go back into Blender you'll switch into shading and within shading you're going to see these uh, textures here and you can see that these textures are appended to uh, the model. But the problem with these textures is that they're inside the model and we want to make sure that we're using our textures and not the textures that are naturally attached within the model. So we're going to unselect all of these textures, we're going to delete all of the image textures associated with this file. So we're going to add a few new image textures so that we can have things like normal maps, displacement, uh, alpha maps, opacity, etc. And this is a very important step because what you don't want to do is, you know, spend all your time modeling something and the model textures are reliant on uh, texture maps that get exported. But when you implement them into your model, they don't show up and your model doesn't look as good. So to avoid that, we want to make sure that our shading nodes are organized correctly and everything is put in the right place. But since we're using the example model, it's not too complicated. There's only one mesh and only one uh, body that all of these textures are going to be appended to. So now we're going to go back into Substance Painter and we're going to do a quick speed run through the process of texturing and creating the, the aesthetics for the Tesla bot. And I'm going to take this time to talk about how much I love Substance Painter because it really is such an amazing tool to get the, the look and feel for a 3D model that you want. Especially when you combine this with the power of Wonder Studio, you can deliver really incredible experiences with surprisingly little effort. If you know your way around Substance Painter, which is really easy to figure out, um, there's so many great tutorials on how to use it online. If you can figure a way around Substance Painter, it's not much different than Photoshop. You just sort of have to reorient your mind around sort of moving in a 3D plane and sort of editing on top of a 3D surface and sort of painting painting objects onto objects. I guess really that's the right way to think about it. Once you get your head around that, Substance Painter is a really great tool. You know, I also had to remember that it's not really worth polishing pennies here because, you know, this is just a, a demo and a quick example of how to create something cool in Wonder Studio. I stopped myself from becoming unnecessarily detailed in the texturing and, you know, just sort of settled for good enough on most aspects of the model. So if you look at the model really, really closely, you'd probably notice some lines that are not perfectly straight or some components that don't really look the same as the actual Tesla bot. And, you know, that's okay. You know, we're just here to, you know, create something cool and validate Wonder Studio as a compelling technology to add to our 3D graphics pipeline. So that's what this uh, demo was really all about. So, you know, after working on that for a couple hours, I was finally satisfied with the way the textures looked. And I really think I had arrived at a really cool looking construction style industrial Tesla bot with, you know, lots of grime and dirt to sort of showcase that, you know, this is not a robot that's used indoors. This is outdoor robot on the surface of Mars or carrying boulders or something, something like that. And um, I really think it came out really good. And I think the textures have a lot of detail and it really adds a lot of character 
to the model and, you know, makes it look rugged and weathered and, you know, like, like something that actually exists and sort of experiences all of the negative side effects of reality. So once we're satisfied with our textures, we're going to export them from Substance Painter. We're going to select the Blender export template, make sure we're rendering in 16-bit, make sure we're exporting at 2048, and then there we go. Those files will be written to that folder, and you're going to be able to see, you know, a whole bunch of maps that correspond to, you know, your normals, your metallic shaders, your emission, your opacity, a displacement, and your base color, and your roughness which are really just layers of a texture that give the, the model a sense of depth and um, it gives the, the colors, it makes the colors pop and sort of reflect in the ways that are appropriate to match the scene. And from here, it's very important that you rename all of your textures. So Substance Painter exports the textures, you know, using the standard Blender format, but Wonder Studio requires that you export your textures in a very particular way. It's very specific, and if you get anything wrong, you're not going to be able to validate and upload your model. So you're going to want to make sure that you rename all of your textures according to Wonder Studio's specifications. Once you've renamed all of your textures correctly, you're going to go into Blender and apply all of those textures as UDIM tiles, UDIM tiles, to their corresponding section. So as you see, there's a bunch of nodes here that are pointing, one's pointing to metal, one's pointing to normal, et cetera, et cetera. And you're going to, you know, select all of the, for example, rough textures, and you're going to make sure that those are all selected and applied to the rough node. And you're going to basically follow that formula for all of the other texture maps. Make sure that you select all of the textures in order. Then you open your image texture box and you, you click open in your image texture box and you apply all of those textures to that particular texture box. So for your base color, you're gonna be applying all of the images with a diff tag. For your metallic textures, you're gonna be applying all of the textures that have a metal tag and so on and so forth. And make sure that you apply the correct textures to the correct node so that your textures don't look wonky and broken in Blender. And the good thing about Blender within the shading environment is that if you upload something incorrectly, you will know immediately because your file will look really, really bad. And uh, as long as you follow these steps accordingly, you should be able to upload everything correctly with no problem. And once you're satisfied with the way that your textures and model are looking inside of Blender, it's time to export the files from Blender into Wonder Studio. So you're gonna save your Blender file as a standard blended file, it should show up as a dot blend. And then you're gonna upload that into Wonder Studio. And you're gonna do the same thing with all of your texture maps. So to upload into Wonder Studio, you're gonna to go to upload, upload character, name your character, whatever works for you, and click create. Once you've clicked create a model, you should be shown a dialogue that allows you to upload your model and textures. So you go into your corresponding folder, upload your example character, and then once you've uploaded the character, you then upload all of the texture files. Once all of those things are uploaded, it'll take some time depending on, you know, how many textures, how many models, the size of the textures, etc. But you should be shown a validate button. And then click that validate button. And if the gods are in your favor, your model will validate with no problems and everything will be good. Though I have to say that does not always happen and depending on the complexity of your model, depending on the way your model is organized, you might have some failures. I have had many, many failures, but for these simple example files, you should run into no issues. Uh, you can then go into an example scene or a scene of your own creation, move into your characters, drag and drop your character onto the scene where wherever there's an actor present in the scene, click next, and then start processing. And there you go. That's how you create a Tesla bot in Wonder Studio. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick tutorial. I just wanted to make this because I'm really excited about this software. And I think it's like super cool. And it really blows me away how quickly and easily I was able to create this character and create this scene and these amazing experiences without uh, having to spend, you know, hours and hours rigging up a character and 
animating the character and then rendering the character and all of the things that are involved in the traditional 3D graphics pipeline. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.